Hey everybody, it's the coach, and this is Madden 20 on EA Sports. Up next, we've got what ought to be a great matchup between the Green Bay Packers and the Chicago Bears. I'll be back with you again with scores around the league at halftime, but kickoff right around the corner. And standing by to call the action, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Now the good news, Coach, is that the winds aren't as violent as they were yesterday in Chicago, but it's still pretty darn cold to be expected, I guess, for December football at Soldier Field. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it, this crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the Green Bay Packers and the Chicago Bears. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, you look at this Bears team entering play. They come off a disappointment last time out that put an end to their modest three-game win streak. Meanwhile, for the visiting Packers, they come into this one knowing it's been a while since tasting victory. They've dropped four in a row. Can they remember what it was like to win a game? In these types of situations, you're looking for someone to inspire you, and it doesn't have to be one of your best players either. The holiday season is upon us. We've got the gift of the NFL as we're underway here in week 16. This will be taken in at the one. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Good work, boy. Let's go. So here are the Bears now for their opening drive. And trotting out there, their tall quarterbacks, Danny gets 6-5. And what I enjoyed watching this week when we had a chance to watch them at practice, the easy camaraderie that he has with his offense. A lot of respect. A lot of respect, and frankly, I thought it spilled over to the defense. All the defensive guys were coming over and teasing and joking with him. You can tell they respect the heck out of him and really want to play well for him. Oh, he's going to air it out right away. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. And the big boys up front in the trenches. What do you think of the O-line, Charles? I love them because this is a group that's so cohesive. They know what the man next to them is going to do at all times, and they operate as a terrific unit. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. Here's the first carry for Tariq Cohen. Just a couple there on the second down run. Now they're staring at a third and eight situation. Time to look at the defensive starters for Green Bay. They're going to need to be strong against the run in this one. They're not an elite unit. They're not, as what you'd say, the top part of the league against the run. They're a solid group, though. They do a good job. What they're looking for in this one, though, is an elite performance. An early tough test on the opening drive. This is third and eight. From the gun, Lawrence. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Akeem Hicks, he's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. It always helps for a visiting team to come in and set the tone on defense. In fact, when we talked with them prior to the game, they said they wanted this home crowd to feel like they had to hide their valuables when they were in town. <laughs> well, the home crowd quiet now early. See if their offense can take over and get some points on the board. He gets us away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. And the punt over the side in the air. And the spot will be inside the 35. So here comes the Packers offense now onto the field. And they will be led out by their 6-3 quarterback. What I enjoyed this week is that you asked to talk to his offensive center before the game and find out a little bit more about him and what the relationship is. And that was a pretty positive story, wasn't it? Yeah, and really what I took away from that is just how it has permeated throughout the entire offensive line, the relationship they've had. It's really a group that's in sync. They care about him. That's the thing. They really care. And when you care that much, you're going to play that much harder for him and give him a better chance to lead the team to wins. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. 
Here's a second and seven. He finds Taylor, complete. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. Seven yards there and a first down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And able to work about five yards out of this as he's taken down up near the 47. A look now at the lineup defensively for Chicago. They're going to need to be strong against the run in this one. They've established themselves pretty well throughout this season. But boy, what a competitive group of people. They do not like that ranking they have now because they think that they're better and they're out to prove it again in this game. Back to the ground, this time with Jones. Looking to find a lane, but he can't. Reined in at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. From the gun on third down, Daniels. And that is incomplete. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. He's going to dump that off to his running back, Cohen. And they're able to get this one across the 35. It's a pickup of 10 and a Bears first down. And that's understanding where the markers are because it's not just running to them. Because on the catch, you could actually be pushed back before the first down. He's getting past it and allowing that opportunity to drift back towards the first down line and still having picked it up. Really well run. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Second and five. All right, Brad, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Looking to throw. Lawrence. Looking left side, and it's complete. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. First connection there of the afternoon for those two, and it's good for a first down. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you at important times because he can trust you being in the right spot and they connected there and picked up a first down. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Well, he challenged the play. It did not pay off. And that means he lost a timeout in that challenge. And as a coach, you hate that. Don't know if you took the advice of the player. You threw it yourself, but it didn't go your way. At the end of the day, it all comes back to the head coach. He has the final determination on whether to actually challenge the player or not. In this case, it didn't pay off for him. And that's got to be so heartbreaking. You throw that flag, you probably feel really confident, and then all of a sudden, boom, you lose the challenge. Yeah, when you take a look at it, you're throwing that flag because you believe you're going to be right. And when it comes back the other way, you have to regroup. It's a gain of five on the play, and that'll make it second down. Now Cohen. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Nothing doing there. They're going to wind up holding him at the two. No gain there, and it's going to set up second and goal. They'll run for it with Tariq Cohen, and the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. 
Ah, uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Chicago. A great effort there. His fifth touchdown now on the year. As his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. But they decided to run it in and got it done on third and goal. A lot of times that's a passing play. And the kicker just has to come out for the PAT. He can breathe a sigh of relief as well, right? Although I don't know if he's really breathing a sigh of relief. I think he likes to put three points on his ledger. Extra point tacked on by Lambeau. And it's now a 7-0 game. And Lambeau now, after the touchdown, he'll kick this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. The Packer offense ready to get their next drive underway. As the season winds down and you look at them in totality, you know, the offense has struggled. The defense has been pretty good, so I would imagine the changes this offseason may be more on the offensive side of the ball. And this is where we always hear the term complimentary football because, as you noted, the defense has played well enough for them to win games, and the offense has held them back. So they've got to reward that defense by improving on offense. I don't know if you make a change, a quarterback, running back, tight end, it doesn't matter. Get better players, better system, so they can play to the standards of the defense, and the win column will result. And he's got it across midfield and into Bear territory. The numbers for Jones last week, 14 carries, 55 yards. They've lost a bunch of games in a row now. They've got to start thinking a little bit differently, maybe a little bit outside of the box. Find other ways to move the football. I don't know if you're going to do it through the air or maybe change up how you establish your run game. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. They had three yards on first down, just one yard there. From the gun on third down. Daniels, pass hauled in by the 6'4 tight end Sternberger. And he's going to be taken down here, still a couple yards short of the first. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. One of the money routes for any offense, the drag route. So tough to defend because the receiver can stop at any point and make himself available to the quarterback and get a completion. But I love the communication we saw there. All the defenders pointing out the receiver, where he was going, and then they're able to rally to the ball after the catch and stop him short of a first down. They'll start things on first with Torrey Cohen. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. A gain there of 12 yards and a first down for the Bears. Getting the sense, Charles, they're going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far is working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. A really good pickup of 28 yards. So into Packer territory now. Here's first and 10, right at the 40. A quick throw out wide, caught by Robinson. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. They'll run on second down with Cohen. One yard, the official pickup there, so it's going to set up third and nine. They'll need to get it to the 30 for a first. This is third down. Back to throw, Lawrence. And he's going to be stopped here a few yards short of the first as the tackle is made at the 33. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. One of the things you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. NFL kickers nowadays, they make things look so easy because normally from this range, about two out of three, and this is not an easy kick. Yeah, 20 years ago, you get where he was in that 50 range, maybe a little over, and it's a big kick, but now we just, if they leave it short, you're like, whoa, what happened? And that's that's what we have here. Yeah, you're right. 20 years ago, we were saying run some more plays and get closer. Now we think they're definitely within range, and you're exactly right. When it comes up short, 
there has to be something that went wrong because they have plenty of leg. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. A loss of two there, second down. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. That one good for 26 and a first down. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Operating from the gun, Daniels throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to Taewon Taylor, but it'll be second down. Once again, they'll go from the 23-yard line on second and 10. Now a quick throw as that's complete on the hitch route. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. I think it all came together there. In breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Green Bay touchdown. A great play there. His sixth touchdown of the season as they are now on the board here in the first half. And Charles, he's able to dive in there in a short yardage situation. Just find a place to get to the end zone. Didn't matter where it was, but once he did, used his nose for the end zone and dove in. Zerline connects on the extra point, and we are tied at seven. So that drive goes eight plays, and it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. This fielded at the two. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Here's second and eight. And that going to be incomplete. A lot of contact, no call, and it's third down. The Bears on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and eight. Looking to throw. Lawrence gets this to his running back, Tariq Cohen. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, ball may come your way. First down, Lawrence throwing it a traffic there, and that's complete. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. This one into the hands of Burton, and he'll get it down here to the 43. 
seven yards there at a first down. That was a route run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. On first and 10, Lawrence. Throw left side complete. That's Ferguson. No gain there on the completion. Second and 10. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and 10. They're going to try the jet sweep. Robinson with it. it. Gets by him, and now a little daylight. And he's taken down inside the 30. 14 yards in a Chicago first down. And while we're seeing more and more of these plays come from the college game into the NFL, and that one, it was run with great success, how about the evolution of the offensive linemen? We're seeing less and less big guys who can't move and more and more guys who are a lot more mobile and can get out in front of that type of a play. On first down, Swift. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Well, they'll run it here on the jet sweep. He's got the first down inside the 10. And he takes this one in for a Bears touchdown. A 21-yard touchdown run. And the Bears have taken the lead. Certainly, there are good things about quick strike offenses that score fast. But a long drive can also work to your advantage as well. In so many ways, Brandon, because number one, you get them tired, but the big one is mentally. They can't figure out how to slow you down, how to get off the field, how to get the ball back. They go to the bench wondering, what are we going to do next time in order to stop those guys? Point after by Lambeau, up and good. And that makes the score 14-7. to seven. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. The Packer offense ready to get their next drive underway. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offense that's humming. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense get the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. The Packers on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and four. Back to throw. Daniels. It's caught here by Adams. Let's go, fellas. Nice catch right there. Brings to mind the sentence, when in doubt, find your veterans. He used to laugh back in the day when they would call guys like him crafty veterans. You, know, you get up in your 30s, you're still playing receiver, but you're around that long at that position, you're doing something right. Just remember this, when he was young, he thought the crafty veteran was simply a guy who couldn't run anymore. Now he understands a little bit better. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play, and it'll bring up a second and 13. And he'll maybe get back to the line of scrimmage, but no more than that. Call it no gain on the dump off, and it's third down. Throwing on third and long. Daniels. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Eddie Goldman has now recorded 10 sacks on the season. This offense line has struggled. In fact, when we sat down with the coach, he said, it's been in tatters lately. They allowed six sacks in their last game. Just gave up another one right there. In tatters, so it sounds a little bit like this right now. Exactly. It's like that paper being ripped. And right now, they've got to find a way to get it back together. Here's J.K. Scott now as he's on to punt for Green Bay. 44 on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. A big kick that time, 52 yards, and the Bears take over. 
Tariq Cohen and the rest of the offense heading back out there. A good job in the passing game. Decent job in the running game, but really they've been more effective uh, through the air. We'll see if that shifts at all as this goes on. Thus far, it feels like they're calling this game in reverse. Normally you run to set up the pass. Here it feels like they're passing, hoping to set up the run and be more effective later on in the game. Yeah, you can do it both ways. We usually talk about it in the reverse, however. No doubt about it. 14 yards into Chicago first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. So they jumped on the left side of that line. And you know when you're at the end spot, you are like in the starting blocks, waiting for the pistol to fire and go. And he jumped a little bit too early. So a first and five now after the five-yard penalty from the neutral zone infraction. From the gun, Lawrence. It's complete to Robinson. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. It's a pickup of 10 and a Bears first down. First down, a run with Cohen. And he'll fight forward maybe to the line of scrimmage, but that's all. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. To throw on second down, Lawrence. And this one's incomplete. Allen Robinson, the intended receiver. And now it's third down. An incomplete pass on second down. That muddles things a little bit here. This is third and ten. Looking to throw. Lawrence. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on. A big call coming on third down. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it. Brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. Good work, boy. Let's go. Let's go. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of... And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. Yeah, blink of an eye. That happened fast and a big sack. Second and 14 as they've got work to do here after the sack. Second and 14. And this is going to wind up incomplete. The coverage there too strong on the deep ball, and now they face a third down. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Back to throw. Daniels. And he comes back with one complete. And he works it across the 25 before being tackled. And I know you can't really see it, but that play spells frustration with a capital F for the guys on defense. They covered everyone else, end up going to the running back out of the backfield, and he picks up a back-breaking first down. We've hit the two-minute mark of the second quarter, 14 to seven. And we remind you, coming up at the half, we'll join who, Charles? The coach. <laughs> the coach, Jonathan Coachman, standing by in Orlando. He'll have stats and scores from games in progress, as well as scores from earlier today. The Sorry. coach. Sorry, we get slap happy up here sometimes. But now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. It's been my observation. There's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. 
That one goes for 24 yards. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Now the Packers gonna go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with exactly a minute to go before halftime. Looking to throw on second down, Daniels. And that's complete to Adams. And he's gonna have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears 20 yard line. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air, and sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Throwing again, Daniels. His throw caught at about the five. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. Now the Packers gonna burn their third and final timeout as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half. A chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. And it's caught. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Second and goal, and they will try again from the two-yard line. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. The weather might be cold, but the playoff races are heating up here on this final Sunday before Christmas. So let's get to it. Lastly, let's check on one final game for you. And you can see they are scoreless as they play the second quarter. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a back and forth first half. Who can put it together in the second half? For the answer, we turn it back over to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach, appreciate it. A one-touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. This will be taken in at the one. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. The Packer offense ready to get their next drive underway. They're down here, but very much in this game. What, what's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. After the run by Jones, here's first and 10. Operating from the gun, Daniels. He'll find Taylor. That's complete. And he'll be out of bounds up near the 45 at the 44. You know, despite the scoreline, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. 
So here are the Bears now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A gain there of 12 yards and a first down for the Bears. Looking to throw. Lawrence. And he rifles one incomplete. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. To throw again. Lawrence. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. And the blitz does come. The screen pass here to Cohen. And he gets this only to the 44-yard line. Not near enough to keep the drive alive. Well, they dialed up the screen there, hoping that convoy of blockers could get out in front and get them enough yardage for the first down, but they were able to get there before he got to the sticks. Now this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. The Packer offense now ready to get back onto the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they're going to get him behind the line yet again as his nightmare afternoon continues. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. To throw on third down, Daniels. Throwing right, and that's complete. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So apparently some grabbing of the jersey there on the O-line. Yeah, just look in the interior, and that's where the penalty occurred. Throwing on third and long. Daniels. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. That's what I'm talking about. Sex. Well, if an offense is going to throw the ball in this part of the field, any pass rusher will tell you that's his favorite part. Gets a chance to get after the quarterback. It's almost like a reverse red zone. They can create points using their defense, and this time they take their man down. On the return is Cohen. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And possession will switch hands first and 10. At the line, prepping for their next drive, the Bears offense. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Now this one complete on the slant route. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. That catch good for five. It's third down. They'll try to run for it with Cohen. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. I apologize in advance, partner, but the beef eaters on the interior of this D-line, you just know they were licking their chops on third and short. And yes, they were rewarded with a tasty dish, stuffing that one short of a first down. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. The Packer offense ready to get their next drive underway. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Back to throw. Daniels. And that will be incomplete. 
And we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. We play to win. Let's go. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. On first down, nothing opening up really on the running play. Give him maybe a yard, and it'll be second down. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Looking to throw. Lawrence firing quickly here, and that's complete. Oh, yeah! So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Now with shotgun handoff to Cohen. Stop shy of the 45. Showed off a nice little move on the play, though. Give him eight yards there. Still a few inches to go, though, as it'll be third down and about the length of the football. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. Just a gain of a couple, but good enough to keep the drive rolling. This quarterback now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. Now throwing on first down and completing it. And he'll take this from 147-yard line to the other. A gain of six. A gain of six there on first. That reception, it brings him up to the 700 plateau. He's at 700 career NFL catches now. And that club in baseball, a rather exclusive club, and one we talk about all the time in football, puts you in the top 50 all-time range. Not so bad either. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. They'll give the defensive guys a little bit of credit. They didn't let the deep ball beat them on that play, did they? No, the, the drag, that guy can be your safety valve. We saw it right there. Yeah, and it picked up a first down for him, too. Back to throw. Lawrence, he's got Burton here. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. A gain there of 12 yards and a first down for the Bears. Let's pin the mirrors back and go full strength. They'll run on first down. It's Cohen. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. That loss of three, a rare stumble on a promising drive. Here's second and 13. Second and 13. That's going to be caught. And he'll take this into the end zone. Now, hold on here. We do have a flag down. So let's see what this is about. And yes, they the want the point, so they will decline the penalty. No question there. You don't think they spent a couple of seconds mulling over what the penalty would do I don't even do know why they asked the sideline. Not at all. When you put the ball in the end zone on a takeaway, take the points and keep moving. Extra point tacked on by Lambeau, and it's now 21-7. So that one a long 11 play drive and it culminates in a touchdown for Chicago. That's fielded in the end zone and no run back here. This will be a touchback and it comes out to the 25 yard line. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with them putting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Meanwhile, they take a shot to start the drive, but this is going to wind up incomplete. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Looking to throw. Daniels. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And this is picked.
picked up by the Bears. And he'll be marked down at the two-yard line. So the defense there, opportunistic. It's nice to give them credit, isn't it? Because so many times it's more a matter of what the offensive guy didn't do. He didn't secure the ball, didn't cover up. In this case, let's just give credit to where it belongs. Knocked it free, made a big play. Tariq Cohen and the rest of the offense heading back out there. So after that hot start, the numbers here show the decline. What has the defense done adjustment-wise? Sometimes when you have a running back who's gotten off to a hot start, you've got to catch him before he really gets going. So you change what you do across the defense. And he's got his man. That's Robinson. Touchdown, Bears. Allen Robinson with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Bears use the short field to their advantage as they cash in for six. Lambeau to add on the extra point. He knocks it through. It's 28-7. And Lambeau now, after the touchdown, he'll kick this one away. This is taken at his four. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Now trotting out there, the Packers getting ready to go. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Big word. I like it, though, yeah. because you're exactly you right. Like that, don't you? All game long, they've struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah, yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs> Now, meanwhile, a final play here is incomplete, and that's going to take us to the end of the third quarter of play. Back now at Soldier Field. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. From the gun, Daniels. Making the catch is Sternberger. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. A critical one here if they're going to have any shot at this thing. So they'll go for it on fourth down. Quick hitter here. It's complete. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. Uh, no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. Back to throw. Daniels felt compelled to go for it there on fourth down, trailing in the fourth quarter. They got it done. And there's always a lot of pressure on a fourth down call. Doesn't matter the distance. He stopped to get it done, as you noted, and they did. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and 10. Looking to throw. Daniels. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he'll only get this to about the 44 as they stop him short of the line to gain. That will go as a pickup of seven on the seventh play of the drive. They're already slim. Hopes are going to ride on this one. They'll go on fourth down. Open man is Taylor. He's got it. And he will have the first down as he gets this to the 47. Now, no reason not to try it there. And they do indeed convert on fourth. Back to throw. Daniels. Fourth down trailing in the fourth quarter. They felt compelled to go for it, and they got it. Well, I'd look down at my play sheet, and what I would find, plays that have been successful throughout the game that have worked at the distance you need, and that's exactly what they got done. Back to throw now on second and 10. Now they go screen. It's complete. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 27-yard line. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the 5. the passer defense. 
Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. One back in the game. That's Jones, second and goal. Second and four. And that is caught, but the back judge right there to say incomplete. Devontae Adams, the intended receiver. But now it's third and goal. Another incompletion. You know, it's a wonder he's still moving around. And he's got it. It's caught for a Packers touchdown. Jay Sternberger, his second touchdown on the season. And the Packers make some inroads here on that deficit. There was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Now Zerline on to add the extra point. It's up and good, and it's now 28 to 14. Makes the score. So that one, a 13-play drive in total. And it ends with a Packers touchdown. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This is taken at the three. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Here we go. The Bears offense making their way out as we give you a look at the playoff race in the NFC. Still a lot to be determined in terms of their final seeding. We do know they'll be in the playoffs, but in what shape, what capacity, we're not sure. But here, ready for a sports cliche, yeah. and then just take them one game at a time, right? Yeah, they have to. <laughs> and look, so the thing about cliches, they've been proven over time. All right, we know that. So, yes, take it one game at a time, but make sure that there's no let up. No getting off the gas, right? No mental letdowns because each one is important for them to accomplish their goals. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. They face a third and four after that last completion gets him six. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And this effort won't be enough as they rally up to stop him a couple of yards short. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. And I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. The Packers offense now heading back out onto the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 11, he goes down. A big loss there of nine yards on the play. And it'll make this a second and long. So they had the big loss on that first down pass play and facing a second and long. Encroachment, defense. So a jump there defensively. And it's a killer. Watch the football. Still second down. Don't move across the line of scrimmage until the ball moves. Three buzz, three buzz. To throw on second down. Daniels over the middle, it's complete. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards, and that's going to bring up a third down. The Bears bring out an extra defender in the secondary now for third down. Operating from the gun, Daniels, and this is going to be incomplete. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It was way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. Looking to throw. Daniels. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Mike Zimmer got to be unhappy with how that turned out. And boy, possession here turns over with a football already being in the red zone. 
So they really needed points here in a two-score game. Could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number of games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations. Teams get the ball back, and that miracle does occur. So they can't let that dream go just yet. They have to get stout on defense here. Yeah, right now, really hoping for a turnover. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. On third down, a run with Cohen. And the tackle made at the 13. He is well short of the first. It's a gain of five on the play, and it'll bring up a fourth down. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. The kick by Lambeau is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So with that, you figure yeah, this game's pretty much out of reach at this point. Yeah, it's going to take a heck of a comeback to come from three scores down, but don't change that channel. Don't go away. Miracles can happen, and you want to be here in case it does. You're a company man. Aren't I, though? And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. The Packer offense ready to get their next drive underway. And on that last drive, went for it on fourth, turned it over. But good job by their defense, though. They held him to three, but this offense, they've got to be a little bit better, a little bit more careful here. And sometimes when you see these calls on fourth down when they decide to go for it, it's not necessarily the coach saying, I believe in my offense. Sometimes the coach saying, I believe in my defense. I can afford to go for it here because if we don't get it, I don't think we'll give up more than three. And that's exactly what happened You think there. that factored in? I do. I think that he had that in his mind going into the game, that I'm going to be aggressive on offense because I know I've got a defense that can hold up their end. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. They'll run it now out of the gun. And his rough afternoon continues. He's going nowhere again. Back-to-back -back stops make it third and ten. On the delay, Jones. And not even back to the line of scrimmage this time as they're on him quickly once more. And the trend continues here in the fourth like it was in the first, second, and third. He's had nowhere to run. And you're probably thinking to yourself, why do they keep feeding him the football? Well, they trust him first and foremost. They do believe that over time he might actually pop one of these runs. The bottom line is he takes care of the ball well for them, so they'll keep handing it to him. Now on fourth down here, that pass knocked away and incomplete. Well, at this stage of the game in the second half, down three scores, I guess they felt like they needed to push. And let's face it, with this deficit, if they give up another score here after they didn't get it, does it really matter? Right. It really doesn't. They had to go and try and make something happen if they had any chance of winning this game. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. They try again with Cohen. Call it a gain of a yard, and it's going to bring up third and five. On third down, Swift. Oh, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. Three yards won't be enough here, as that'll bring up fourth down. But forget knowing where the first down line was. This defense created their own line of scrimmage. They won every battle up front. And a lot of times that is one-on-one. -on -one. And if you win your one-on-ones enough times, your defense is going to be pretty good. They had more people to the football and snuffed out the play. So it's three more points, and that widens this thing out even further here in the fourth. And you know in this league, you can never have enough points, but this widens it out, as you said, and now it's all about ball control, isn't it? Now after the made field goal, back out Lambeau to kick this one off. This is taken at his four. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. The Packer offense ready to get their next drive underway. And last time, went for it on fourth, didn't get it. We'll see if they can pick themselves up off the mat and do better this go-around. Sometimes I have this vision of coaches writing notes to themselves before a game. And sometimes that note says, be aggressive, stay aggressive. Maybe that's what we saw in the last possession. Yeah, they were very aggressive. This time, will it result in points? We'll find out. Yeah. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. 
Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Now a draw play. This is Jones. And he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. So it's Packer football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Back to throw. Daniels. And they will not be able to hook up there. It's incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Bears are going to get the football back, and they're going to get it in great field position. On first down, Cohen. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. That one looks like he'll throw here. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. Well, they probably don't need to run a play here, but you wonder if they're going to be able to resist on first and goal. Looking to throw. Lawrence. That is caught at the 7-yard line. And the stop will come inside the 5 at the 4. That'll bring up second and goal after the gain of five. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So for Chicago, it's a big win here as they move to 11-4 and four now in the year. And they will hit the road next week for a date with the San Francisco 49ers. Meanwhile, for the Packers, they're guaranteed now a sub-500 season as they fall to 6-9. and nine. And they'll try to get back to their winning ways next week as they head to Indianapolis to take on the Colts. That'll do it for us. I'm Brandon Gordon, alongside Charles Davis. Thanks to our entire crew as well. We'll talk to you next time. So long, everybody.